All right, so now we're going to go through the process using doc search, which is our no code app for actually issuing your credentials. So as you'll see here, I'm logged in on our dashboard. Uh, I'm in test mode, which is what the big orange bar at the top says. Uh, there's a little toggle here on the right that if you click that, you'll go into production mode. So depending what stage you're at, you'll use production. Obviously for real credentials, if you're just trying to learn the system, learn what we're doing, test mode is probably perfect. I'm going to stay in test mode for now. So first thing when you're creating a credential, you click on the big blue button that says create verified credential. So the first step it asks for is creating the issuer uh, profile. So this is who you are, who do you represent? So again, this would be like your university would fill in here. Uh, so you can add a logo. Uh, I'm going to skip that step just for now. Uh, add a name. So we'll say University of Doc. Uh, description, you can add or not. Uh, key type, you're obviously with the default. Don't worry about that. That's again, getting to the cryptographic uh, mechanisms we use, just different ways you can do it. Uh, but just the defaults are fine. So there's, again, this is creating a decentralized identifier. You can think of it here as an issuer profile. It's another sort of phrase we use uh, fairly regularly for what this is. So I click on that. And this right now is writing the decentralized identifier part of that to the blockchain. So again, the issuer is now recorded on the blockchain, which is really good. Uh, and then locally on our system has created that profile. So it's stored the logo, stored your name, stored your description, and that kind of stuff. But that the name, logo, and description do not go onto the blockchain. They are stored in doc systems, not on the blockchain. And then you have a choice of the type of credential you want to create. Right now, we just have a couple of basic defaults. Um, I'll go, so going to the university here, I'll do the degree option. Uh, which issuer do we want to use? So again, we'll use the one we just created, which is the University of Doc. And you can see there's a little preview here on the side. Uh, and as we go forward through this, you'll see that preview sort of updates a little bit as we go through it. So we'll hit continue. And the next thing is who you're giving it to. So you can actually add many people here. Uh, we'll just add one. And so we'll just quickly add an ID. Uh, so this can be unique identifier, or it could be a decentralized identifier, which is a what we recommend if you have it. Uh, not everyone will have one. Uh, and here, I don't have one at the moment, so I'm just going to put in um, student number one as my thing, uh, bachelor's of verifiable credentials. It's the degree title that we're doing. And the degree type is a bachelor's. science will say and we'll just say it was earned today which today is what the 18th oops actually I backdated that that's hilarious anyway it doesn't matter <laughs> and we'll say it's going to Francisco His date of birth, and this is totally not true. We'll just pick a random date. And what do you think? I'll say he was born in 1994. Total guess. And October 12th. Sound good? Sounds good. And do we want this credential to expire? We'll say no. Degrees don't usually expire, so we'll say no to that one. Uh, issue date is pre-filled. All right. So we add that recipient. So you now see that. That information is all there. You can see student one. Uh, if you hover over, you can see a lot of the details. If we want to do bulk, we can also import a CSV file. Again, I'm not going to show that right now, but you could then just do a comma separated list, you know, export it from Excel or, or whatever you're using to import that. The next option down here is called persisting this credential. So to persist the credential means that Doc will store a copy of the credential on our systems in our database that you could then retrieve later with the URL. I'm actually not going to do that this time, so I'll turn that off. Uh, I will allow revoking of this credential. So this will create a registry on the blockchain that can be revoked. Uh, and we'll anchor it too. So again, we'll put that cryptographic hash on the, uh, the blockchain for this credential. So that's all the information that we need. Then we hit Issue Credentials. And it's going and doing the work right now, putting it together. It's creating the uh, replication registry on the, the blockchain. It's storing the, the hash as an anchor on the blockchain. All right, and that is done. So now, because we didn't persist it, we need to download the credential. This is very important. If you don't persist it and you don't download it, you can't get it back. <laughs> so very, very recommend, strongly recommend, you click this download credentials. And that downloads a zip file. 
in that zip file, there will be two files. There's one that's called a, a JSON file, JSON, which is just is a text file which contains the details of the credential. This really is the credential. This is the, what you would share with people. Uh, and it also has a PDF version, which looks much like the preview that we saw, uh, but it's really just for display purposes and for you know, easy understanding of what it is. But it's that JSON that is really critical. So what we'll do is we'll take that downloaded credential. I'll email it to Francisco. He will import it into his wallet and uh, that'll be done from this end. Hi everyone, I'm Francisco, I work at Doc over at the marketing department and I want to show you how to import a verifiable credential to your Doc wallet app. So I'm going to open the wallet and I'm going to type in my password, please don't look. And so we, we are now on the first screen where you can see your doc tokens if you have them. You can also send, manage, receive, buy doc tokens from here. On the second screen, you have the list of your credentials. The third option is to scan a credential. So if Mike had selected the persistent option, the credential would have a QR code and I would be able to import it like that. But since he didn't, the only way to import the credential is through importing a JSON file that is sent to me. In the last screen, we have the settings where you can back up your wallet and remove your wallet. So let's go back to the credential screen. As I said, Mike emailed me the JSON file of the credential that he created. I'm going to go to the plus sign on the top right corner. And I have the JSON file here, verifiable credential.json. I click it and it imports to the app. Now I have my bachelor's of verifiable credentials. Uh, issued by Mike to Francisco Batista, uh, that's me. And then the credential is on my wallet. Uh, it's tamper proof uh, and I can present it for verification. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.